Good morning, could you, Ralph. Could you come into auditions with me in the future and just do that exact intro? <laughs> I'd be delighted. Like, you should even, do that. That would be brilliant. People do want to take you around with them just to introduce <laughs> them like in restaurants yeah. and, you know, yeah. waiting for the tube and stuff. I'd love that. That'd be fantastic. Yeah, I'd be delighted too, Ralph. Thank you. Ralph, welcome back. And here Thanks. we go again. Death in Paradise. Uh, back on the beam after the big Boxing Day Christmas show. Yeah. What about those ratings, my friend? Yeah, they're, they're all right, aren't they? They're all well, right. Well, they are through the roof. And, and nowadays, a lot of TV shows need stepladders to get anywhere near the roof. Yes. And a feather duster. <laughs> yes. But Death in Paradise is still doing great. Yeah, business. it's doing good numbers. It is. Um, I, listen, when I first took over, um, I've been asked a lot, oh, were you nervous about taking over? And the honest answer is I, I just tried not to think about it. Right. Um, you know, because, it, of course, it can be a big responsibility. But it was the first show I'd ever done that wasn't an, I wasn't originating the show. And you, you make a show and you go, well, I hope it does okay. Yeah, yeah. But I was literally stepping into this going, this is a huge, this is a beloved show which really, really matters to people. Yeah. And I wasn't thinking about the responsibility of it until my mother, being my mother, went... Um, um, oh, that's great. I'm really proud of you. And then called me back 30 seconds later and went, don't ruin it, will you? Yeah, don't mess it yeah, up. So I'm like, Thanks, Mum. That's the kind of encouragement that I've well, always enjoyed. Well, thank God you haven't. Yeah, so it seems to have gone okay. Okay, how many how many eps will you have done by the end of this series? How many altogether? Well, good question. So uh, I've done four and a half series, so eight of a series, eight, uh, fours of 32, uh, plus half, 36, plus three Christmas specials, so 39. 39 Knocking on 40. Yeah. So, so how has the journey been for you? Just take us through the ebbs and the flows. And, and learning about, you know, about about holding on to resp loosely. You've got to hold on loosely, not too yeah, tight to these exactly, particular yeah. reins. Yeah. You know, when much. when did you feel like you, you had it down? Did, did you settle? Have you settled? I was going to say, I don't know if you ever feel, feel like it. The moment you feel like you've got, I've, I've nailed this, then yes. maybe, maybe it's time to, to, to stop. No, I just think... Um, it's been an it's been amazing it's been an amazing journey and but taking over from you know I was able to watch what Ben had done yeah. and what Chris had done and what yeah. Ardler had done so you know you sort of know what's expected so the idea is like you say you don't want to grip too tightly the idea is to step in and make it your own but you've still got to honor what the show is and yeah, everything yeah. that's been that, that people are doing I mean it's, you talk about the ratings literally I got out of um, the black cab to come here this yes. morning and the driver who was lovely and he said I'm sorry do you mind if I just say it? Death in Paradise is the only show that I can still get my family to all sit down and watch because yeah. my teenagers won't put their phones down for anything else and it's an amazing kind of thing to be like we're one of the last actual family show well it's very clever isn't it it's very it's a very clever show because yeah. of the demographic because they have something for everyone yeah don't they? Exactly, exactly you know and and you came in to, Ralph just came and said I said how's the football because he's a great footballer I know because I've been on the wrong end of his <laughs> skill and prowess at Wembley Stadium which uh, yes. was horrible for me no less. anyway I'm so glad you had a great day uh, <laughs> it's one I try and forget and he says well I'm getting on now because I'm old now I'm 44 I played on Tuesday still recovering you're talking to the wrong guy Listen, you say that, yeah. right? But I was in the waiting room to come in here and I saw the monitor, of the, you know, on the TV screen yeah. uh, here in between songs. And there you are on the floor doing your exercises. You can still knock out 100 sit-ups, I'll have all, all your listeners know. There but, you um, go, exactly. No, it's, a video. it's a video we play on constantly. <laughs> Every day, yeah. <laughs> It was also, I don't want to get into too yeah. much detail, but it was a strange angle on the camera. Yeah, you can see it was like, my face. What is Chris doing? I've got um, a sit-up double. Uh, uh, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, no, but you still fit as a fiddle, though, aren't you? You still love your footy. Yeah, I still get about a bit, but I do pay for it for several days after these days. Uh, we were talking about um, the new Bob Marley film, mm -hmm. which is coming soon, One Love, in a couple of weeks' time. And um, we had Kingsley on the show who plays Bob Marley. Yeah. And obviously part of Bob Marley's relig literal literally religion was two hours of football every single day and yeah. he was really good yeah i've seen the footage he was a now, really good player you can't leave footy alone no all right mm -hmm. you are you you spend six months a year in the caribbean yeah uh how much how much footy action is there in uh, between takes as, as, well in between takes there's there's a, a little bit but the trouble is with on on that show yeah the, one of the biggest challenges mm. day in day out is actually not overheating. It's, it's a really sort of dull thing to have to. But on, it's literally got to the point where, and it's not just about your own comfort. It's there's some very like practical problems. Like if you get too hot, I will sh uh, sweat through my shins. I've I've never knew I sweated through my shins. Right. But like if I'm wearing dark costume trousers, then they have to costume department has to go. Sorry, we can't use this take, and they have to come running in and dry my shins Rough with their hair. Sticky. Dry. It's very very depressing. It's getting sticky on set, yeah. everyone. And then and then you know you make cup starts to melt off and they have to keep so you have to keep cool but there mm. is a, surprisingly a lot of football um we play it like once or twice a week if we can and you need that when you're out there six months yeah. and you're away from home that long it must be terrible oh uh, yeah uh, you need that <laughs> i'm just when saying. you're in the caribbean I'm just saying. getting paid it, yeah no, six it's months awful. of the year I feel, I feel like you, you have no idea i feel like you don't realize how tough it is for oh me, my Chris. gosh i feel <laughs> 
text us how, how bad do you feel for Ralph now? Plus yeah, four four you, triple everyone. three double zero mm-hmm. triple three, three double zero. Please. Um, <laughs> It's interesting you say that about sweaty because this uh, we watched the opening episode last night. We both got the, the secret link of it. Very good. A big, big twist at the beginning of the opening episode. Won't say t- won't say anything about it. I think you, we can. I think we're we? allowed to say that. Yeah. All right. Well, I said got... it on the one show the other day, so we might as well. All right. Please do then. Go ahead. Yes. Well, the commission of the crime in episode one that's coming up is that the commissioner gets shot. Selwyn Don Warrington. Selwyn Don Warrington. As uh, good as Patterson. it gets, by the way. Yeah. As a human being and an actor. Amazing. He's an absolute I legend. I love that man. Yeah. As I've said it before, but I'll say it again. When I grow up, I want to be Don Warrington. <laughs> that's a lovely <laughs> thing to say. He's just a say. dude. He's an absolute that legend. That is so cool. But in um, in the sort of last quarter of the first ep, when uh, you as D.I. Neville Parker, when you, you, you gather all the suspects and anybody involved in this, what may or may not happen yes. in episode yeah. one. And because it's a, uh, it's a, it's just, it's almost a monologue that goes on. I, I saw you sweating a bit, and I thought, oh, yeah, this was a long take. Yes, the, and, well, it, ideally you're not supposed to see because it's no, TV, so it's but perfect. I was land. on sweat watch, but yeah, exactly. I knew we were have this chat. Yeah, yeah, sometimes you just, it, it just is what it is. I mean, it is genuinely hot, and also <laughs> a lot of the guest cast comes in, and some of the main cast, you know, they get to swan around in shorts and a t-shirt, yeah, 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 and they're yeah, like, yeah. wow, this is a bit of a dream, isn't it? And I'm, I'm like, try it when you're four months in and you've been wearing a shirt, tie. Uh, yeah. Jacket and carrying a bag in you, every. You're, you're like 24 7 geography supply teacher, aren't you? Yeah, I really am. <laughs> exactly, yeah. How is the yellow Land Rover? <laughs> It's. Do you know what? It runs like a dream. Is there more than one, or is no? There... It's just one, and it's it's it runs like a dream. I love. Yeah, that it's car. great. Yeah, yeah. Do you think they'll ever be parting company with that car? The I'm sure company? I know a man who would be interested oh in, my uh, in acquiring it. Yeah. Oh, all right. What, it to what the else? Um, what, you, what, what do you want to say about episode one? How much do you want to say about it? Uh, well, that's the that's the big sort of. Obviously, we can't talk too much about it. But yes, um, the. Um, uh, it starts with the commissioner. Bit, it's a retro. Shot. It's a timepiece, isn't it? Well, yes. Oh, I'll tell you what is nice about yeah. the first episode. A couple of things. The commissioner gets shot, and so it's a very. <laughs> that's that's not, not a nice thing, but it's a, a creatively <laughs> well, speaking. For a start, it's a nice thing. Finally, we get. <laughs> finally, Don Warrington takes the bullet that he's been deserving. Yeah. No. Um, it's the commissioner gets shot and that is the crime and um you know we we don't know and uh, i i'm saying nothing we don't know whether the commissioner's going to make it yeah. or not and um uh creatively speaking it's nice for all of us actors to play uh, when the characters the characters always do their best they're professional they always do their best to solve to solve the crime but on this occasion, it's really personal. And there's always something really nice about that to, to play. So there's a lot kind of riding on it for the team in this one. And the, the nice little detail about it is that um, Sean Maguire is in it. You um, uh, remember Sean from sort of... Getting n- ever more handsome. Ni- ni- I was going to say 90s, Age- 90s heartthrob fame, yeah. but who is now more handsome than ever. Aging it's really annoying. extremely it, annoyingly yeah, it's well. it's really annoying. But he's lovely, Sean. I hadn't seen him for, for years and years and years, but Sean was in the first ever episode of uh-huh. Death in Paradise, the pilot episode, and then comes back as the same character in, in the 100th episode, and there's something very neat about that. Well, that's when um, you know you're with a, a team of absolute pros, when they yeah. can start pulling tricks like that. Yeah, it's absolutely. super cool, isn't it? I'm slightly annoyed, though, because up until then, I'm the only person who's been in it twice. Yeah. <laughs> Although I'm in as two different characters. Is that right? You're only, I, was in, I was in series two. It hap- no, I know, I know you yeah. were, but it happens more than you think, doesn't it? P- people yeah. inhabit different roles in the same show. I, they have, you know, on, over the years, I mean, I was in Heartbeat over the years five times as five different characters. So it definitely were you actually? Happened. Yeah. So from when I was like 14 up until, I don't See, know. another 20. amazing show. Yeah, yeah. It was, a, it was a classic, wasn't it? But but I, I knew some, well, I, I still know some directors who made movies and things like that. And then just for a laugh, because yeah. they would invite guest directors for Heartbeat, wouldn't right, they? Yeah. I'm sure they did the same, same on Death thing, in yeah. Paradise. And um, they, they, so a few movie directors who made really like very, very famous and successful films said, "Oh, well, I had to go at Heartbeat the other day because mm-hmm. it was 11 day shoots, weren't they? Yeah, Usually exactly. Heartbeat. Really and they said, "Oh, different ball game, Premier League." Yeah. And they, these are movie directors. Yeah. They went, "No, no, no, yeah. no, 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 different gravy." Directing an 11 sh- yeah. day shoot of of Heartbeat. It's a, it's well, a different you know scale. It, has, it shares with this with Death in Paradise, actually, in that um, Heartbeat was this extremely sort of gentle, warm show that, that was very sort of digestible yeah, for the audience. And, and Death in Paradise is, is very digestible and whatever. But I've, I've said, having been there now and, and seen like the scene behind the curtain uh, yeah, yeah. of The Wizard of Oz, it's um, it, it people work very, very, very hard to make it look so easy. Yeah, yeah. You re- like that show that seems so, sort of really effortless and easy going or whatever. Totally. A lot of work goes into making it look that easy. Yeah, of course. Yeah. 100%. 
Um, what I love about the beginning of episode one of the new series, it's on BBC One, it's on Sunday, it's series 13, 9pm, it's the big slot, the big uh, mm-hmm. drama slot now, Death in Paradise is back, back, back after the Boxing Day special and all the success that went on there over the holidays, is we go back in time. Yes. It's, a, it's, a, it's lovely, isn't it? Yes. And it makes me think, ooh. Yeah. It, uh, is, it, is this Death, Death in Paradise dipping its toe into the water of a, maybe an origin series? I, well, I didn't think of it. I thought you were going to start asking if we were going to start doing tra- time travel and see if we can challenge Doctor Who. But um, no, I, I don't know. But it's do, very Doctor Who anyway. Do, yeah, do you know, I, I, I didn't think of that. But now that you mention it, yeah, that'd be great. I and wonder also if I can the play backdrop a third character. lends itself to that, you know, that vibe, Incredibly, that time. Yeah, yeah. Uh, because what we do, I mean, we can say this, can't we? We see Don Warrington's character going for his first ever exam to yeah, join the police. It's a little bit of an origin story, yeah, for, for his character. And his bike gets run over. That's right, yeah. His beautiful vintage and, uh, bike gets Yeah, run I know. It was very sad for everyone. <laughs> but yeah, so you know what? That's that's an example of, even in the time I've been there, I've seen that the creative team behind the show, they really, they're really getting more and more, making bolder and bolder creative choices, trying to push the envelope of uh, what what they can sort of experiment with, and whether that's um, with settings and locations and and, and back, backdrops for the crimes themselves, but more importantly, just backstory of character. And uh, again, talking about how we work really hard to make it look so easy. Yes, people would come for the for the show to watch the murder, and it's all very sort of nice and neat and tidy, and see the puzzle get solved. But even in the time I've been there, every one of the main characters now in the series has challenges to overcome, things that they have to process, and things that they have their characters have to develop. And you know, we do that in an hour a week. That that's a lot to cram in, yeah, and yeah. you've got to set up a you've got to set up a murder, introduce new characters, find a twist, find a red herring, find a, a and resolution, stay relevant, and stay relevant, and find ways for the characters to have challenges. Yeah, and Death in, pa- in Paradise is the tiger woods of its genre in as much as they're not really playing against anyone to to beat because Mm. they're number one yeah and so the whole thing about tiger woods is that he used to play against history you know about this no no because you know he was number one for so long yeah but yeah so he always had to play against someone so he played against jack nicholas's record because you've always got to find somebody to play against you've got to introduce some kind of competition and that so it's hats off all the more to death in paradise because it's so difficult to Mm. keep this going and also the great thing which you've alluded to already in this interview, is to stay relevant. Yeah. You know, and they've got to stay relevant by introducing younger characters yeah. with younger relationships yeah. for the other members of your family as you're watching together exactly. to engage with. Yeah. It's well it's, when you know, when my I think second or maybe was it third year I was there, they brought in um, Taj Miles who plays Marlon. Yeah. And he's uh, literally walked on. I hadn't had not met him until we did our first scene and we walked out of the police station and did a rehearsal of the scene on the balcony and for some reason we hadn't yet met. And literally just doing it, he was 19 years old and just opened his mouth to start speaking. I was like, that boy's a superstar. Yeah, it's like yeah. straight away, he's just got it. But you know, this 19 year old lad coming in, absolutely smashing it, being absolutely brilliant. Yeah, does that remind and- you of anything? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm so glad you made the connection. That was all I was telling you that story for, really. I didn't even want to talk about Taj. Um, no, he, he was he was fantastic. And I just think it's exactly that, this... this, this um, boldness and bold choices of ref- refreshing characters refreshing cast and then giving them challenges but finding that that um like alchemy between yeah. between the characters well, you've got your mentor uh, mentors in other actors like like don who are around yeah because it's really it's really tough sometimes to have to to find a mentor yeah you know and and that's why you can find mentors that aren't necessarily ones that you could ever meet or even may still be alive but you've got to be a mentee of somebody yeah you've or got some to other people to, you've got to learn from someone what have you learned from people like don and other actors that, you know don Don's a, a really good example because Don, everybody approaches every job differently, but Death in Paradise is a really interesting one because everybody's so far away from home and there's a sort of, there is, you can, you can, I mean, I certainly did when I was a guest, uh, you can sort of approach it being a bit like, well, this is going to be a laugh, isn't it? It's a bit of a holiday bit feel. Bit of a jolly. Bit of a jolly. Yeah. Um, but no, you know, it's hard work. and But weirdly, the, the more seriously you take it, the easier the, the work is, if that sort of makes, makes any sense. And Don's a very, very very serious about his craft yeah. and um, he's super th- clever as well he's brilliant he? and he thinks really carefully about and you know you'll see him come in and he's incredibly polite and professional but you'll sort of see him gently come to the director and go I'm really really not sure about about this, this speech that the commissioner has and I'll be thinking oh I wonder if Don doesn't like the phrasing or he wants to change something or, and Don will be like I just think when he when he takes a breath there I just don't really see why he's doing that because the commissioner on this in this instance is is really keen to get everything Confident done. And keen. 
and that sounds like nothing. Like, why not just not take a breath? But it really matters to Don think, about oh. the rhythm. <laughs> yeah, the rhythm you, you and the character. And go, yeah, I was I like, I better read, I better read my again. lines again. Yeah, I wasn't even realised there was a breath there. That's the thing, yeah, though, isn't yeah. it? That but he's is so professional, thing. he's so meticulous, and he takes it so, he's so serious about his craft. I was like, it was a real kind of, not that I was not serious about my craft, but do you know what you mean? No, he, but if you get serious early, then you can have fun later on. Exactly. You look at him and you go, there's there's no kind of there's no job where you go oh this is just a bit of a laugh mm. every line counts everything is serious. so when you watch like uh, the jungle if you do watch the jungle you know three weeks in the jungle if you win it I mean you smash that because you do six months um, away from home no problem whatsoever no problem, yeah. well actually d funny you should say that I was I noticed this year first year I went there and you know the guest cast when they come out for a few weeks they struggle with this yeah. and what have you and my family did when they came out but you know the mosquitoes are a real thing and you sort of scratch and you're coming up in welts and all that kind of thing but um, over the years they just don't bite me anymore. well I'm sure they do bite <laughs> I'm sure they do bite They've me They've had anymore. enough a little. Yeah, exactly. They're Unlike like, the viewers, thank God. Yeah, yeah, we don't like that blood anymore, thanks. But they... Um, That's so funny. I, I, I'm sure they do bite me, but I don't react. And clearly my body's just got used to it. And just Clever like, whatever. Things. So let's let's get into the jungle. Wow. Let's do it. And, um, you know, having been part of the community there on and off for well, literally two years of your life out of the last four and, four and a half years, something like that? Yeah, yeah. Five so years. six months a year for four and a half years. Have you got any connections that you'll keep forever? Or will you go back there forever? Yeah, I reckon I'll, I reckon I've not seen the last of Guadalupe. Like, uh, even, even when I finish the show, I'll yeah. be, I'll be back. I'll be back. And like, have your digs changed? Cause it was it hotel, is it hotels, houses? Uh, yeah, I'm in a villa. I'm in a villa. I think you t you touched upon this last. I'm in a villa. It's, and if my five year old self could have seen that I was in a villa, it would have been I, w I would have melted. <laughs> and what? It is quite Hello. amazing with a pool. Uh, yeah, it it was amazing. So <laughs> yeah, you know, like um, even even when the time comes, because you know you refresh the characters, you yeah. refresh the and that's one of the show's successes again. Like Doctor Who, the, the it's the, very the, Doctor Who. -y. Yeah, um, in its own way. So you know, nobody stay, nobody's there forever. But even when I actually eventually leave it's it's i don't think i'll ever fully ever know that i'm not backing Guadalupe. all right well, we've got at least one more series with you um other highlights from the ser series forthcoming series can you give us uh, a flavor of what's to come uh, one highlight for me yeah. was that uh in episode two one of the guest stars there's very few people these days that i get starstruck by but mm. sometimes you're like wow I'm in oh here presence. we go here we go here we go here we go actual greatness what's happening now was uh of what you think i'm gonna say it's you i've always been starstruck <laughs> by you um but um hayley mills is in um episode two Oh. And Hayley Mills is, of course, a living legend. Whistle Down the Wind was a seminal film from my yeah. childhood, and I watched it with my grandparents. She's an Oscar winner. But even as a child, she was doing that incredibly specific Lancashire accent, where I'm from. Not just Manchester, not just Berry, but very specifically where I'm from as a child, and she was brilliant. And I would have mentioned that anyway, but it's really quite neat and tidy that she also happens to be Crispian's... Uh, Crispy and Mills's mother from Cooler Shaker, who is in the studio. Who's in the studio on so, the show now? Yeah. Uh, should we go and watch Cooler Shaker play live? Yeah, let's do that. Can we hear it for Ralph Little? How great is Ralph? We love a bit of Ralph Little on the show. Woo! Thank you, Ralph. Ralph, seriously great to see you. Thanks so much, man. Thank you so much.